Good morning guys. Welcome back to Paige in the chapter or welcome if you are new here. My name is Paige and welcome back to another reading vlog. I'm starting this on my sofa because I'm starting this very very spontaneously. I wasn't actually sure when or what I was gonna vlog. I took a tiny little break from vlogging last week. Vlogging is my favorite thing to do, but it, like reading vlogs are just my favorite thing. But it was a little bit, I don't know, I was growing weary of the fact that I was vlogging what I read every single week. So I just took a little bit of a break. I'm back now feeling refreshed. I actually wanted to start this much earlier in the week. This is actually gonna be like a long weekend reading vlog, but I did really wanna start this earlier in the week. But the reason that I didn't is because I have no idea what to read. But this morning I finally decided on a book. So I'm starting this vlog. I'm going to be reading book three in the God Rush Ranch series, mostly because I really wanna to get to book four. I have been told that book four is insanely good. So I am looking forward to book four, but this is the only thing that sounds particularly like tempting to me. I've been really struggling with a desire to read this week. It's not that I feel slumpy. I'm just not particularly tempted by anything. So book three in the Gold Rush Ranch series by Elsie Silva is all I can really motivate myself to read today. And rather than putting that off, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go with it. I might be binge reading this series, but it's fine. It is what it is. So welcome to a weekend reading vlog. It is a Thursday today. I have tomorrow, Saturday and Sunday off. So it's gonna be a little long weekend kind of reading vlog vibe. I'm not gonna start reading this book right this second. I just wanted to start the vlog and I'll catch up with you when I do start reading and when I have some thoughts. Right, I have finished work from my long weekend and it is finally time to get some reading in. I told myself I was gonna go to the gym don't actually think I'm gonna do that. So I'm just gonna start the next Gold Rush Ranch series book. I'm gonna, I'm heading now to run myself a bath and really like relax this evening. That's why I'm thinking no to the gym. Cause I think like it's the start of my long weekend and I'll just enjoy it. BRB also run my bath. Okay, I have just loaded up book three. It is called The Front Runner and it is advertised as a fake dating. So I'm very, very excited to go into this one. You can hear my bath running in the background, I'm pretty sure, which is annoying to me, but oh well. So yeah, let's go into the first book of this, like what is essentially kind of like a little 48 hour readathon. Might be a little bit more casual than a readathon because I do plan on like enjoying my time off as well, but I'm very, very excited to have another long weekend go past me for planning it out this way. And yeah, let's go into the next Elsie Silver book because I just know I'm gonna finish this in like 24 hours and I know that I'm gonna love it because Elsie Silver can do no wrong. And I'm very, like, I really liked the way she did her kind of fake dating trope in Chestnut Springs. So I'm excited to see how it goes here. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna stop talking and let's just go into this book. Okay, so back where we started, except my hair is hopefully noticeably cleaner. And I read, I read 18% of this book in the bath and I'm obsessed with it. This is my favorite one so far. Why is the love interest in this so hot? Like he is by far the hottest so far, just in the way he acts. I love that he like puts up this front of arrogance and like hostility to everyone and everyone hates him. But then back at the farm, he's like such a horse guy and like so emotionally connected to the animals. Like, ugh, I love that about him. And so essentially this follows uh, Mira, who is the doctor in the previous two books, the doctor. She's the vet in the previous two books. And the villain of the past two books as well is Mira's love interest in this. And she gets a different side to him that everybody else gets and everybody else absolutely detests this man and for fairly good reason and she gets to see a completely different side to him and kind of calls him on his shit and isn't letting him like act like a dick and yeah i just oh, we follow them as they as um in order to save like this foal's life she has to go to i really wish i could remember his name so mira has to go to stefan and ask him for a favor in order to save this foal's life and she's also very passionate about horses and so he agrees to it but only if she goes on three dates with him which is a setup i'm already loving on top of the fact that these two are just so clearly meant for each other and like the passion the chemistry leaping off the page love these two together and so yeah 18 percent in this has this is set up to be my favorite of the three that i've read so far still kind of hoping that book four will like take the cake just because i have heard so much good stuff about book four but for now this is my favorite of the three that i have read and i'm literally just gonna sit here 
binge read this the rest of the night because I'm obsessed with them and I need to read more. my first like actual check-in i uh i'm in like gym clothes right now because we're gonna go to the gym and get there before it gets busy for like friday night and then kind of just enjoy the rest of the day in relaxing gaming i have maths to catch up on and have a little bit of like i don't know maybe do a little bit of writing fleshing out an idea that i had i we got up this morning i went to play a little bit of golf which i showed you and also took a little trip to Waterstones. I am not a fan of my local Waterstones though. It does not often have the things I want it to have, but I did pick up Done and Dusted from the works and also my fairy loot copy of Raiders of the Lost Heart got here. So weekend plans are pretty sorted this weekend. I finished uh, the Elsie Silver book this morning. Would give it four stars, has been my favorite one so far. Really, really loved like the character development and just how these two constantly were just missing each other but not at the same time i don't know how to explain it i wouldn't say this is fake dating though it's listed as fake dating because these two go on like fake dates where for stefan they are real but mira keeps calling them fake because it's part of this like arrangement they've made that he will help her out if she goes on these dates with him so i think fake dating is a little bit confusing but there's like a small element of fake dating um there's like one date they go on where they have to pretend to be together for Mira's family. But yeah, I um, I really, really liked this one. I thought char the characters were just so well suited to each other and it made for a really fantastic romance. I am rushing through this because my battery is flashing at me. But yeah, hoping to get some more reading done today. I I'm unsure which one of these I'm gonna start. I'm thinking Raiders of the Lost Heart because I did just read like an Elsie Silver book, which is kind of cowboy adjacent. Also, I have been really looking forward to this one. It is stunning. And the book that I am fleshing out today, maybe just like letting myself sit with and consider a little bit more is archaeology based. Basically, we were talking about this book at work and I was saying that I really wanted to write an archaeology romance, but someone beat me to it. And then I was sharing my idea and everyone was like really into it and thought it was good. So I think I might spend a little bit of time and just see if it is a viable something. I don't know, I never finish the things I start, but it's just, it'll be a fun way to spend my like bonus day of the weekend. So I'm having a really fun day. I've played some golf, I've had a Starbies, I have done some book shopping. Now to go to the gym before it gets busy and just get that out of the way because nobody actually well, some people do really enjoy the gym, but I am not one of them. I go out of necessity and not desire. And then, yeah, just a chill day in. Typical Friday night for us in this household. We're gonna get McDonald's, we're gonna watch Gogglebox. I would love to be on Gogglebox if anyone from Channel 4 is watching. Not that you would be, but I would love it. But yeah, just typical Friday night plans. Just a lot of relaxing. I got quite lucky that I have today off as my, like, bonus day of the weekend. And Jack also gets Fridays off. So we finally have a full day together as part of the weekend. Hi guys, my camera died yesterday. So my camera died when I am back. I have read about 30 pages of Raiders of the Lost Heart. I've used like one of those crappy like advertisement stuff that people always feel the need to put through the letterbox as if I care. I'm using that as a bookmark. But yes, I got to the beginning of chapter three, which is page 34. I am unsure how I feel about this book. I do think it could be set up good. It's like a rivals to lovers. We follow our main character and she is like the expert in her field on this Aztec king and she is invited by a mysterious person 
to join this dick and when she gets there she realizes it's her rival from grad school who like stole this really important like opportunity from her and has just been a thorn in her side her entire life basically and there's hints that something has happened between them in the past we don't know like to what extent it has happened it's a dual perspective we know that they are both attracted to each other we know that our main female character cannot like stand him whatsoever she hates him there's less animosity on his side but it still seems um like a, a rivals to lovers kind of situation and i don't hate the setup to this book what drew me to this book was the archaeology elements so I only did this to myself, but reading it did kind of take me back. Like I had a bit of a like, like a, a trauma flashback to my time, like studying it. But I'm, as I'm getting further in, I'm feeling better. I think it was just like initial reaction of, oh no, this is not fun. It's just making me think of being a student. So yes, I'm enjoying this. Can't form much of an opinion at 35 pages in, but I'm hoping to literally read this entire book today. I don't think it's possible, but I really, really want to make a huge dent in this so that I can also hopefully, fingers crossed, get done and dusted read this weekend, but I just don't see it happening, unfortunately. This book didn't, like, drag me in as much as I wanted to. I wanted to read, like, a huge chunk of it yesterday, but it just didn't capture my attention too much and also i have to do like a deep clean of the house today like the house is disgusting and it could take a big chunk out of my day trying to get it to a level that i'm happy with so yeah i'm gonna have some breakfast i'm gonna sit here and read another little bit of this book i then have to film a video of clean the house and i'll just catch up with you when i'm actually back to reading and can vlog <laughs> hi guys i have not i filmed the video i haven't done the cleaning i am not here like ready to properly like pick back up with the vlogging but i did have an afterlight box arrive so let's unbox this together this is the march box the theme was to the moon and back um i did skip april because april is a very expensive month for me i'm using my fairy loot letter opener let's see what we got we've got a to the moon and back um author letter oh it's not really an author letter this just explains like what the book is about it's got the blurb of the book this is the author letter i found it the artwork is stunning and we have the actual book it's called the kiss countdown the edges have this little like rocket ship end paper artwork one end paper artwork too and then this is what under the dust jacket looks like you can't really see because of the lighting in here but it's this like silver foil with like a coffee cup a telescope uh, a rocket like just space and star related things i think this book is very pretty and i'm very excited about this this is technically my first afterlight box i have fangirl down which i bought off a friend so it's not like the first afterlight book that i have but this is the first box that i've actually like received as part of my subscription and this is also signed by the author so i'm very happy with this i do not know when i'm going to read this but it's a very pretty book i am very excited about it and yeah, that's my first Afterlight subscription. <laughs> um, I need to clean now, but I will catch up with you guys in a bit. I figured you may as well come with me whilst I take this to its home. Okay, it is quarter past one and I'm finally sitting down to read some more of Raiders of the Lost Heart. I'm bloody starving, but the floor in the kitchen is drying, so... That will have to wait another couple minutes. I'm gonna take the time, like, I'm, wow, I'm shaking. I'm gonna take the time to just read this afternoon. I still have to do the weekly shop, but Jack and I like to do that together. It was like the one thing we were really excited to do when we were still living at home was like do the weekly shop together. And we're like a good couple months in now. We still like do it together every week and wait for each other to do it every week. So I still have to do that this afternoon. But other than that, all of my like filming stuff and 
cleaning stuff that's all done so all i have to do for the rest of the day is read and do the weekly shop so i'm actually feeling pretty good about the time i was kind of worried it would be a lot later by the time i finished everything i needed to do yeah gonna gonna read this when i have some thoughts about the actual book i will let you know and hopefully that won't take long so i would say i'm maybe getting close to halfway through raiders of the lost heart now i am really enjoying it um but right now it's feeling like a three star. I love the rivals element, but I don't know if we've lent too far into Ford being a bit of a dick because I'm a little anti Ford and I'm not really rooting for these two to get together. And I'm not entirely sure like what the actual reasoning behind what he did. Like I'm sure there is a reason behind it, but I'm not sure it's going to be enough for me to be like, okay, like yeah, he's a good person. Cause what he did was kind of bad and I can see why she hates him or like why she isn't his biggest fan. And then I just think some of the relationship development is happening quite quickly. She very much doesn't like him and is skeptical of him. It feels like she is acting around him in a way that just she does kind of like him. Confiding like really deep things in each other and they haven't seen each other in years and they don't have the most seamless of relationships. I am enjoying this book but it just feels like there is something missing from the relationship development. Like it, it just all feels too fast and maybe it will slow down. Like I don't know it just it feels like we've gone from rival slash enemy to the lovers fairly quickly I mean I'm not at the lovers bit yet but I don't know it just feels a little bit something just isn't sitting right with me about this relationship development maybe I'll have an answer for you by the time I get to the end but I am really liking the archaeology aspect and I do like the fact that Ford is forced to try and be nicer to our main character because he needs her and the thing is like she doesn't like Ford because Ford is just handed it seems like Ford is handed a lot of things on a silver platter and he was handed her dream dig that matches her research based on his connections and who he knows which is unfortunately the very accurate state of academia he really needs her if he's going to actually pull off this dig because he is not qualified in the way that she is qualified to pull this off so i do like that aspect like that aspect is very reflective of how archaeology and academia works unfortunately and i like that it is i think something that is actually driving forward to make nice with her and make an effort with her and try to convince her that he is not some shithead because he needs her to stay and help him he needs her on his side so it's like an interesting facet to their relationship that i'm actually really enjoying but yes i'm going to keep going i'm just binge reading this today and i will update you when i next have thoughts <laughs> So I am 240 pages into Raiders of the Lost Heart and I am really not enjoying this book. I really, really wanted to. I was so excited about this and to have an archaeology romance. And I do like the, I mean, this is not accurate to archaeology at all. It's more of an Indiana Jones style of archaeology than an actual style of archaeology. Oh. But I can tell that this author has done some research, like the excavation methods are all like fairly accurate and the representation of these like underfunded subjects in academia and the politics that causes is very accurate and I really appreciate that. It was actually like the reason that I decided to leave archaeology because I didn't see a future for me in academia that was stable with how underfunded and just hard to get into academia it is for these kinds of subjects and was why I decided that I wanted to work with books instead. So I do really enjoy that representation but I hate Ford. I cannot root for this relationship because I hate Ford. In fact I think I hate every single character in this book except for Cory. And Cory talks a lot about her own sexuality maybe a little bit too much, but I like the message the author is trying to go with. So whilst this is also a comment on the state of academia, it's also a comment on sexism in academia and um, I normally love this. I loved this in Ali Hazelwood's books 
but I think Abby Hazelwood is successful at it because she has these cinnamon roll male main characters who fiercely stand up for like women in academia and they like the the sexism kind of comes from other people so you can still believe in the relationship here. Ford understands that as a man he has had a much easier time. He he acknowledges his privilege in this situation but he continues to use it to his advantage. Like he has long conversations with Corey about it. They he at multiple times acknowledges his privilege and how he was able to get this dig instead of Corey, even though Corey is the expert on this and Ford is not, and yet continues to then be like, but I need the money, so I'm gonna keep doing it, essentially is what he's saying. Like he will not come clean to Corey about his actions. He will not help her in any way. He will not put someone else's needs above his own. And I do understand that he has stuff going on that's supposed to make us more amenable to him. But like, I'm sorry, there's other ways around it than using your privilege as a, as a man in academia to earn a load of money and you know what if he had just done that I think it would have been fine but because it's set against him supposedly falling in love with Corey the person he has stolen this dig of off it's really hard for me to like him or root for this relationship in any way um and it's really winding me up and I also think that I, I have a theory about Ethan and the kind of person Ethan's gonna turn out to be and I'm 80% sure that I'm right so uh yeah, I'm really, I'm not liking this book too much. I think I will probably give it 2.5 to 3 stars. And I still have a massive chunk left. This book has actually ended up being very long. I, I wouldn't necessarily not recommend this though. I think for a fun Indiana Jones style archaeology book of like, we're like going digging in the jungle and there's going to be like booby traps and chaos and fun like action packed things. It's fun. Um... In actuality, archaeological digs are so boring. <laughs> They're so boring. You have to go through the dirt like centimeter by centimeter, and then you have to put all of that dirt into a bag to go and be sieved, which you then have to do in like normally blinding hot conditions. It's very systematic and it's not nearly as fun as a lot of archaeology movies make it look. So there is an acknowledgement of that in this book. Like, as I said, like her, the author's knowledge of archaeological methods is pretty good and there is some acknowledgement of the fact that digs are pretty boring but at the same time you have Cory being kind of batshit crazy and all over the place making things chaotic so I do think it's a pretty good blend of real archaeology and Indiana Jones like the mummy style archaeology so I'm not here to be like to just shit all over this book and say like don't read it because I do think it's fun and I'm really excited to see some representation for these subjects because they they're important subjects like a lot, a lot of people don't believe that they are but they're important subjects and they deserve some recognition they deserve to not just be shit on by the government and told that they don't matter and not get any funding which forces people to not study them which just it's just a never-ending circle of people believe that these subjects won't get you a job so then they don't do them so then there's no funding for them and around and around we go but hey I've done two archaeology degrees and I have a job so <laughs> yeah that's that's just my little rant like I love the representation of academia and archaeology as a whole subject but I hate how this author has chosen to approach the sexism in academia aspect because Ford is at the heart of this sexism and even though he's acknowledging his privilege and very happy to listen to Corrie and her experience as a woman in the workplace. He's not actually willing to do anything about it if it impacts him negatively, which has just really turned me against him. So I'm going to sit here and try to finish the last 100 pages of this, but honestly, I think it could take me all day because I'm enjoying it that little. And I'll catch up with you in a bit. Two, 280 pages in. What Ford did has finally been revealed. The, the details have finally been revealed to Corey of what Ford did and also to the reader because like we had an idea but we finally know the full extent of it and I don't want to continue reading this book because to me what he did is absolutely unforgivable. There is nothing that could happen in this book that would make me think yeah they should be together. What he did was that bad and so against everything that Corey stands for. I cannot see a way forward for these two. And that is, that's just the problem that I've been having with this book and how, like, I just had a feeling it was gonna go this way. Because he is the person directly benefiting from this sexism in academia and ensuring that he can use it to his own advantage, I 
cannot back him. I cannot back this relationship. And I'm actually like angry that it was thought that this could turn into some like romantic, let's get back together, I forgive you moment because what he did is unforgivable. Yeah, to my core, I am a Ford hater. I will never ever back this man. He is blonde and he is evil and the two just they go hand in hand i'm sorry but we have a new like tablet of the contemporary romance world i hate ford okay so i finally finished it and i'm giving it three stars the ending actually did take me by surprise um ethan took me by surprise um the actual like climax of this book in terms of what happens with the dick took me by surprise to see the kind of third act conflict with our relationship did not take me by surprise but like the actual events of the book were different to what I had thought they were. I really liked how this ended actually like the epilogue I think was perfect for this book and these characters I really enjoyed it so you know I enjoyed some aspects clearly um but yeah I'm gonna be giving this three stars it was not my favorite I still think that Ford what Ford did is unforgivable like, yes, he felt bad about it, and yes, he acted differently after the fact. And, like, in the epilogue, we see him act very differently, but I don't think what he did is forgivable, so... Kind of did not like Ford. He's also, like, just blinded by his own ego, really, to be honest. I feel like a lot of the events of the book could have been avoided if Ford just didn't constantly believe he was hot shit and that opportunities would fall into his lap because he ended up getting everyone into a very sticky situation because he just was handed an absolutely perfect opportunity and was like, yeah, of course didn't question it, didn't think anything of it. Yeah, I didn't, I did not like Ford. I felt like this whole book could have been avoided if Ford was not an egotistical dickhead. But I'm gonna read Done and Dusted now. I'm actually gonna start editing, but then I'm gonna read Done and Dusted because I'm just, I'm a bit readed out from this. I've only read one book this weekend, but this just took more out of me than a rom-com should. I'm gonna just get myself into a good like reading mindset to start a new book today. And then I will, I will come back and let you know once I start the new book. But for now, I just need a moment to decompress. So I am going to start Done and Dusted, but I'm going to end out this video first because I just don't feel in too readery a mood. So I'm going to end out this video, but I will be updating my thoughts on Done and Dusted over on my bookstagram. So there will still be thoughts around about this. But um, it was not my favourite weekend of reading. I really enjoyed the Elsie Silver novel. Um, I actually kind of forgot that I read that though. So <laughs> in one of my last clips, I said I'd only read one book this weekend. I didn't, I read two because I did read the Elsie Silver novel. Gave that four stars, was my favorite of the Gold Rush Ranch series. And I highly recommend you check out the Gold Rush Ranch if you liked the Chestnut Springs series because Gold Rush Ranch is just as fun, just as good. Really, really enjoyed that. It was just unfortunately overshadowed by how much I didn't really enjoy Raiders of the Lost Heart. And I was so excited to get this book and to have an archeology span romance. And I really thought I was gonna enjoy it. And I just didn't. And I wish it had been because Ford was a better character because this did have a lot of good elements. It had a climax that was really intriguing and really took me by surprise. It had Corey, who was a great main character. I loved the representation of academia and how fucked up it all is. I just think that Ford was so entitled and egotistical and I also just think that he and Cory disagreed on some really core beliefs or even if when they spoke about it they didn't disagree but actions wise Ford's actions did not match up to what he said and so it just felt like there was such an intrinsic difference between these two that it should not have worked like they are not a couple that should stay together it made me not enjoy the book as a result of that and has yeah I just want to stop vlogging I just want to turn off the vlog camera I want to be done with this video and this book so yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this long weekend in my life and um, the reading that i got done this weekend it was pretty good to get two books read in a long weekend i'm pretty impressed with myself if you guys did enjoy this and you would like to see more from me then do please feel free to hit that big red subscribe button down below and stay tuned for future content i upload every single wednesday and every single sunday so there is no shortage of bookish content here for you to enjoy i am gonna get on out of here now so i can start done and dusted and enjoy the rest of my evening and i hope you you guys are having a fantastic week you're enjoying everything you are reading and there are no reading slumps in your future and i will see you for my next video bye guys mm -hmm.